let's get right into it. Number 10. The Color That Bends Physics Ancient Chinese craftsmen created a color so bizarre that it breaks the laws of physics. They called it Han Purple, and it's not just any ordinary pigment. This stuff was used to paint the famous terracotta warriors. When modern scientists got their hands on this ancient paint, things got weird. They cooled it down to temperatures near absolute zero and hit it with magnetic fields millions of times stronger than Earth's. And that's when this ancient pigment decided to break every rule in the physics textbook. The electrons in Han Purple suddenly lose an entire dimension. It's like if someone took a three-dimensional movie and suddenly it became a flat photograph. The craziest part is the ancient craftsmen who made this stuff had no idea about quantum physics. They were just trying to make a pretty purple color for their statues. They accidentally created something that modern scientists are using to study quantum computers. It's like finding out your great-great-grandfather's recipe for chicken soup could help build a time machine. Number 9. The Whispering Court of the Maya At Chichen Itza, there's a stone court where you can whisper from one end and be heard crystal clear 450 feet away. It's like ancient FaceTime, but without the frozen screens and bad connection. That's exactly what the Maya built at their Great Ball Court. This massive stone court stretches over 450 feet long. When you clap your hands in the middle of the court, something bizarre happens. Instead of a normal echo, the sound transforms into the chirp of a sacred bird called the Quetzal. Modern architects have tried to recreate this acoustic magic and failed miserably. We've got smartphones that can translate languages and robots that can do backflips. But we still can't figure out how these guys made stone walls carry whispers across one and a half football fields. Meanwhile, your phone won't even connect to a speaker that's 10 feet away, but the Maya did it better with just rocks. Number 8. Archimedes' Death Ray Weaponized Sunshine Roman soldiers sailing towards Syracuse must have been pretty confident, until their ships started bursting into flames for no apparent reason. You look up and see hundreds of mirrors pointed at you from the city walls. Some madman decided to turn the sun into a weapon. That madman was Archimedes, and he basically invented the world's first solar-powered death machine. The story goes that he lined up a bunch of polished bronze mirrors along the city walls. When aimed just right, these mirrors would concentrate sunlight onto enemy ships like the world's deadliest magnifying glass. We still don't know if Archimedes actually pulled this off, but the fact that we're still trying to figure it out 2,000 years later shows just how brilliant this guy was. He basically invented laser weapons before we even had regular weapons that worked properly. Modern military researchers are actually working on similar concepts today. Archimedes was just 2,000 years early to the party. Number 7. The Nebra Sky Disk Archaeologists in Germany basically found a 3,600-year-old computer that could track the stars. This bronze disk is covered in gold symbols, showing the sun, moon, and a cluster of stars we now call the Pleiades. But this wasn't just ancient bling. They marked it with two golden arcs spanning precisely 82 degrees. That's exactly how far the sun moves along the horizon between winter and summer. That's the kind of precision we need satellites for, not something made by people who thought thunder was angry gods bowling. The gold they used came from Cornwall in England, over 1,000 miles away. So these guys were running international trade routes just to build their star tracking device. Modern attempts to recreate it using Bronze Age techniques have all failed. We can't even figure out how they got the measurements so perfect without modern tools. It's like finding a smartphone in King Tut's tomb. It just shouldn't exist. Number 6. Orichalcum, the lost metal of Atlantis. According to Plato, there was this legendary metal that was supposedly second only to gold in value. This stuff supposedly had a reddish-bronze glow that would make modern LED lights jealous. According to Plato, the people of Atlantis covered their entire temples with this metal. They were basically the ancient world's biggest flex. Then, in 2015, some divers found actual orichalcum ingots in a 2,600-year-old shipwreck near Sicily. Scientists analyzed these ingots and found they were made of copper, zinc, and traces of other metals in perfect proportions. But nobody can figure out exactly how the ancients made this alloy. Modern metallurgists have tried recreating it using ancient techniques and keep failing. It's like they had the recipe for Coca-Cola and someone deleted it from existence. We've got all this fancy equipment and chemistry knowledge but we can't make what some guy with a clay furnace made 2,600 years ago. Number 5. The Nimrud Lens A 300-year-old piece of crystal from an ancient Assyrian palace might be the world's first telescope. This thing was discovered in Iraq, and it's got archaeologists arguing like kids on a playground. It's a perfectly shaped piece of rock crystal that can magnify things by three times. Some experts think the ancient Assyrians were using this to look at planets. 
In their writings, they described Saturn as being surrounded by serpents, which sounds a lot like rings if you're looking through a primitive telescope. Either these ancient guys had the world's first telescope, or they had really good imaginations. The British Museum thinks it was probably just decorative. But who makes a perfectly ground optical lens just to stick it on furniture? That's like building a working jet engine and using it as a coffee table. If the ancient Assyrians were building telescopes 3,000 years ago, Galileo was about 2,700 years late to the party. Number 4. The stone's too heavy to lift. In Lebanon, there are stones so massive that even our biggest cranes would need therapy after trying to lift them. We're talking about blocks that weigh 1,650 tons. That's heavier than three Boeing 747s stacked on top of each other. And these stones were moved almost 20 hundred years ago. No electricity, no engines, no hydraulics. Just pure ancient Roman stubbornness and probably a lot of very unhappy workers. The quarry where these stones came from was actually uphill from where they needed to go. So somehow these Romans moved stones heavier than buildings uphill without modern equipment. They probably used massive earthen ramps and wooden rollers. But even with that explanation, the math doesn't add up. There's one stone still in the quarry called the Stone of the Pregnant Woman. It weighs 1,200 tons, and it's been sitting there for 2,000 years. Modern engineers show up with their fancy equipment, take one look, and quietly leave. It's like the ancients left us a note saying, Bet you can't move this. And they were right. Number 3. The Desert Aqueducts That Defy Time the Nazca people built something so reliable that it still works perfectly after 1,500 years. Meanwhile, your dishwasher breaks if you look at it wrong. The Nazca people of ancient Peru built these underground water tunnels called Puquios in one of the driest deserts on Earth. These tunnels have spiral openings that look like giant stone tornadoes frozen in time. The spirals catch the desert wind and use it to push water through the tunnels. It's a water pump that runs on nothing but wind. They built this system without any modern tools or understanding of physics. Yet somehow, they created something more reliable than anything we build today. These tunnels are so well built that local communities still use them for drinking water. While your city's water main breaks every summer, these 1,500-year-old tunnels keep working like it's their first day on the job. Modern engineers have studied these tunnels and still can't fully explain how they work so efficiently. The Nazca turned the driest desert on Earth into farmland using nothing but rocks and really smart hole placement. Number 2. The Laser-Guided Rivers of Stone The Romans built water channels so precise that they dropped just one inch for every 300 feet. That's flatter than most modern parking lots. Get the angle wrong by even a tiny bit, and you've either got destructive rapids or a very expensive ditch full of stagnant water. They did this for hundreds of miles. Without lasers, without computers, without even a decent ruler. They were doing calculus-level engineering with rocks and string. Some of these aqueducts are still carrying water today, 2,000 years later, and they're still working perfectly. Number 1. Ulfbert Swords Viking Blades of Impossible Purity Vikings were swinging around swords so advanced that modern science can't explain how they made them. These weren't your average Viking hack and slash blades. These were the legendary Ulfbert Swords, weapons so ahead of their time that Europe wouldn't match their quality for another 800 years. The steel in these swords was so pure it was like comparing a diamond to a chunk of coal. Each blade was marked with the inscription, Ulfbert, basically the medieval version of a designer label. These Vikings somehow got their hands on crucible steel from Asia, steel so advanced that Europeans wouldn't figure out how to make it until the Industrial Revolution. But then the knowledge of how to forge these swords just vanished like someone hit delete on 800 years of technological advancement. Modern blacksmiths have tried to recreate these swords using period-appropriate techniques. They all failed. These Vikings were running a weapons program so advanced that we still can't figure it out with modern technology. And we probably never will. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.